Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I am Jonathan Byer. Oh, oh, and this <laughs> is, this is what, Dave? <laughs> this is, this is this and that. We are going to be discussing everything that happened at the Russian test skate and the Neville Horn Trophy, plus a little Rika Kihira. So if you are new here, please subscribe below. Remember to smash that like button. Jonathan, I have to say, this Russian test skates, the intros, the marching out, it is the closest thing we have to drag race. Truly phenomenal this week. It really is, isn't it? And then like them, and you know how awkward it is sometimes to like film those sort of like B-roll moments when they're like casually looking at their credits that aren't there when they're filming and they're like nodding and I, you know. Oh no, to the those girls were ready. Some of okay. them were ready for that walk. <laughs> to Demisheva, there were some that I rewatched a few times to really capture it. I wasn't sure how Tuk Demisheva was gonna walk forward I thought when she kind of pointed to herself looking at the um the side the the females all looked like they were on America's Next Top Model or Drag Race Sorry, they, were, they, they were bringing it and I I watched you know that junior dance team I like so much that's with Krilova and in theirs she even like whipped her ponytail in her partner's face in the promo and he was like <laughs> the the women were bringing it the women were bringing like it. like every Russian I've ever met. The women were like fashionable and like bringing it. The men had that sort of drunk mafioso vibe going on. Like you could just feel the gold chains. Like all they want to do is get fat and go to, I don't know, the bathhouse in Fort Lee. Like it's just like what they are destined to do and maybe live in Edgewater. I am not okay. sure. Okay. I love <laughs> all of it. Oh my God. I have to tell you. Without the Russians, with some of the skating we have seen this season, because we haven't seen all of the top skaters together. And I know the Canadians in us, among us, want us to say that Montpellier World had a calm and beautiful quality. Which it did. But watching the Neville Horn Trophy, <laughs> when Luna Hendricks is the winner, it is like watching the Riders Cup where you're like, did they not pay Christy Yamaguchi enough to appear at this competition? Yeah, Why was there another show the same weekend that everyone opted for instead? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> You're like, oh, Karen Kadavy is winning again? Damn. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> that is what Luna Hendricks was like winning to me. And then we saw, listen, there were some marvels of modern medicine going on at the Russian test skates. I couldn't believe it. These girls, some of them weren't training. They weren't jumping all summer. And they came and they delivered. Now, Everyone had an injury. They had excuses why they were in quads. They played on our skating fan sympathies. Everyone has a back injury, which they also did before, but right. they didn't care then. Right. Uh, you know, some of them, when maybe they were away from Dr. Shevetsky for a couple of months doing the shows, making money, they got a little bit taller, their bodies maybe adjusted, <laughs> and they looked a little bit more human here. Now, <clears throat> all right. Let's talk about the woman of the hour. When you heard the voice of Christine Brennan in a Terry program. Well, you know, at first, you know, as it comes through, I, I'm like so new to AirPods. I know I'm like way behind the times. And they, they do this like sound imaging so that the sound comes from different parts. So I was listening to it and I thought, I'm, am I also playing something else in the background? And then I was like, no, remember it's Russian test skates. Of course, there's gonna be audio laid over it for some reason. And then, and then I was like, wait a minute, this is because I had no, I knew nothing about it. So then you see the emotion and then you see all the thing. And I was like, oh my God, they're making her relive her trauma so we can all point at her and remember it. And then you said, go back and listen to the voice one more time. And when I went back and listened, and she, what did she say? She's like, this is extraordinary. Or this is unbelievable or whatever she said. Outrageous. Outrageous. And I was like, oh my God, it is Christine. I said, she should pull like um, the band that covered, you know, House of the Rising Sun and thought they, they were owed something. I hope they're, they must be paying Christine, obviously, for you. <laughs> Well, I called her this morning. I was driving home from brunch and I, and I thought, Christine, you were banned by US figure skating for four months. You've been, you know, yelled at by countless Federation heads. Where does this rank? And she was at a bridal shower. So she hadn't like 
fully seen it. She was with family, but she's like, that's my voice. That is my voice. Like, you haven't seen the hood yet. You haven't seen the hood. She was. It was so profound. It inspired both of us to wear hoodies and we like don't really own them. This was the UBC hoodie I bought last year at Skate Canada because the, the rink was so cold. I had to like raid the gift shop for anything that was warm. <laughs> so I own a few sweaters, maybe. I only had two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I decided I hated the other one in the process. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I bought four sweaters today. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I was like, Dave, for the bit, should I use this mink? And you're like, no, no, we're going hoodies. <laughs> I want okay. listen. Every Sunday, tragic heterosexuals, they drink Blue Moon eat nachos. Uh, bread they juice? Them. They drink bread juice? Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> idiots, right? They wear yeah. these things. Well, this is our football. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Complete with our own deflate gate or whatever trauma. <laughs> We've got our own. My, this is ours. All right. Yeah. Yeah. When I mean, you saw Trusova wearing the nightgown and the hair that hadn't been combed, skating. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was just it such a moment. Now, did you know this was coming, the Valieva program? Had they yeah. announced that they but, were doing okay. this? Okay, so I had re read it on Twitter. And remember, I was uh, interviewed by a woman from Sports Roo. And when, I, when they said, they said on Twitter that she was going to skate to the Truman Show with vocals. And originally, I go, the Truman Show. So they are going to say that this is reality TV. Remember, because remember in the Truman Show, right. everyone in his life was fake, but it was real to him. Right? right. So they are going to say this whole thing with Valieva is politics and bullshit. And remember, what a narcissist do, Jonathan Darvo. They deny, they attack, they reverse victimized offender. Okay. This yeah. is everything. So they are saying that everyone is attacking this girl. They are, again, lest her. we forget. Do you remember the video that came out where it was like the Harry Potter Death Eaters? It was like Dementors were like all attacking the young girl in the arena. That like came out like that. Jonathan. Russia does not disappoint. They also don't understand subtlety based on who Darbadiyeva's makeup. They do not understand less is more. More is more, okay? Yeah. This is why they are so perfect for the drag world, right? Like everything is more. Now, <clears throat> all right. Watching this, yes. So I asked, I asked, I said, is this real? The, no, no. Oh yes, okay. And I think that I can't tell, I can't tell if the Russians think that the program is actually good. Like, I think it's great. I think they have finally outdone a true masterpiece, which were back to back. The tribute to Diana Can't Gabriel. hear, yeah. I can't hear, mm -hmm. I can't hear, which frankly, we didn't know for the next six years, they were going to be changing whether or not Diana could hear based on their own statements, right? right? Can Diana hear, can she not? I don't know, Lyshev is now saying she can't hear. Previously, Diana told us that she could hear when Christine Brennan asked Diana tough questions, she couldn't hear. Again, I don't know whether or not this girl can hear. Frankly, it's more fun not knowing and guessing. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like you don't wanna know, right? Yeah. Do you, you wanna know if Diana can hear? I mean, We'll have to wait for the next bed page of a show program to find out. Yeah. I, yes. Yeah. Right. Like sometimes she can hear in the program. It depends. Right. Selective right. hearing, if you will. I don't know, but they do have a great lift on the front. I do so many fun things coming down that pike. I mean, that story continues to evolve, but we'll have to get to that on another day because this right. is so much to cover today. I just, I couldn't believe it. You know, this. The closest thing in recent history that I remember, well, first of all, there was the- oh, Wait a second, I left out the second program that they have outdone because it's not just the hearing and outdone. Because no, 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 it's yeah. really the prelude, Jonathan. That was only the short program. What is the most iconic Terry program of all time? Hello, ring, ring, ring. It's 9-11 calling. Yeah, if don't forget your suitcase. Yeah. This was better, okay? I this mean- This was heavier handed. Seeing yeah. heavier handed, seeing Virginia act out whether or not she didn't know her husband was going to come home or call her or was he alive or dead mid footwork sequence when she would look around i mean that girl is an actress right mm -hmm. she was the star zagitaba can't even ask a question and the kiss and cry <laughs> made an article making fun of her okay 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 always just 
The sure. difference being, I guess that Medvedev wasn't, didn't actually know someone who died in 9-11. This actually happened to Valieva and now we're all pointing and like looking at her and gawking at her reliving this horrible memory of her life. But they're reverse victimizing it. They're putting it on you, Jonathan. It is not her. I was like, no, no, no. You really put this on her. And in recent history, it reminded me of, of two Americans. One was, remember when Mirai, after she was left off the team for Sochi, um, David Wilson gave her um, winner, takes winner takes it all. The judges will decide. And it was like, why does she want to relive and stay in that? Same with the Gracie, she used to be mine. It's a powerful song. It makes me cry practically every time I hear the song. However, we're now living in that. And I just, this felt like gawking at a young woman's trauma, like remembering it and see it right down to the hood over the head. I was like, she did that because you told her to at the, I don't know. It was, I did, it, it made me feel icky. It made me feel icky to watch it. After the short program was lovely. I was like, do Crazy more of that. It made me feel like Jeremy Abbott had something that he thought was a brilliant idea. And I mean, Jeremy is sometimes hits it out of the park and sometimes crashes into the boards. I mean, you, you know, he lives it on the edge as most artists do. You don't know which way they're yeah. gonna go, yeah. right? He He's never skated saying. to Christine Brennan's voice, let the record he show. Never <laughs> did. You know, I'm sure his mother would have loved him too. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Or his quote, calling her pathetic or whatever. I mean, that Christine, was. I am yeah. so freaking jealous. They have how many hours of voiceovers for us to pick up? And they... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just That's yeah. what I wonder. It was going to be like, and this is this and that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh, because she told me her website's been attacked by bots. You know that when any of that happens, like when a Terry messages you, because I had made my Instagram private earlier. And when Smart. something like that's happened, you get like a million like requests. Yeah. They all have like no followers, but they follow you. And you're like, right. Delete, 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 right. delete, delete. I mean, exactly. On. You know it's coming. So that's the one thing where it's like, Christine, they are going to come for you with your voice. Yeah. You know, you can, I can already tell you what the bots are going to say. And some of them are right. real, which is also more fun. When, they, when a skating fan has zero sense of humor. Oh, yes. Well, because I think Christine does have a sense of humor. So she oh, knows yeah. how to take that in stride. You know, yeah. I'm a sensitive soul. So sometimes when they come after us, I'm like, mm -hmm. but then well, I, she does have the house that Tanya built. I mean, you have to remember she's getting how much per CNN appearance. I don't know. If That's right. But yeah, I imagine okay. <laughs> like travels a lot. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, when uh, you know, those things happen. Okay, so this program, Jonathan, I, I just, the drama, the theater. I don't know if we're going to see her skate more than once. I mean, I don't know. It seems very touchy. I feel like they put everything into delivering this performance. Into this moment, yeah. She skated clean the first time we've really seen her. Yes, there was that event that we saw last season, but you have to remember they had just taken down and blocked all of the Russian channels. So most people didn't see the fake version of Worlds, the alternative reality version right. where Terry right. was seeing her. That really wasn't seen by many people and it was kind of forgotten. This right. is the first time, all of a sudden about a month ago, First Channel figured out how to get a YouTube stream back up. And, Cause they were doing things that were just on Telegram over the summer. That's why I would post the videos so that people right. could keep informed. And of course, I love how like skating fans are like, I'm never watching Russians. I'm never watching them again. Let me just tell you, Jonathan, when I share a link, we can see how many people are watching. I know. The people are interested. All right. Yeah. There are the few people that will comment that they're not watching and it's like, Good, Good for, for you. you. Yeah, but it happened. And Good for and you, Cinderu. Lucinda Roo. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah. yeah. listen, I looked at the numbers from Nebelhorn. I looked at the numbers from Russian Test Gates. The people have spoken. It's just, yeah. they want, yeah. the, I don't even know if it's the skating, they want the drama. Although, the skating was better here. Was it clean skating? I'm not going to argue that. Okay. Or beautiful. Yeah. I mean, uh, <clears throat> it was back I mean, to the formula. You know, I was like, oh, right, this formula again. Now, it's not to say it doesn't have a place because these are obviously talented skaters and things are happening here. So when you compare it to something like Nebelhorn or Lombardia, things like that, you are like, okay, there is more to discuss here. 
but yet I was sort of like thrown back into the world of Danny G, which I in no way miss when they're not a part of the scene. Listen, I have a question. Why does it Terry and Danny, they have the skaters do a spiral. They can actually get the leg up. Now it's often assisted with their leg. Right. Listen, I do my spiral every day. I'm not holding it like a Nancy. I'm just saying the foot <laughs> over the head. All right. right. Anyway, these girls are holding, but they only do a spiral to like lean down to the ice. They're hanging their heads in shame over that lack of holding <laughs> a beautiful movement. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the rest just, it was a dramatic, theatrical. I thought Philip Glass, although a theme from a uh, film, a musical upgrade, if you will, for Danny G. Very much so, yeah, yeah. Right, I, I really Bill was trying to like build up Nathan and his, you know, he was bonding over the fact that they both went to Yale. You know, Phil will tell you, you know how he's one of those people that went to Yale. You know how Priscilla Gilman, if you ever, like on Twitter, she, she will tell you that she's a professor at Yale. You know, like, <laughs> you know Yaleys will do that. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> they, uh, he was like making that whole thing about, you know, Nathan developed a deeper appreciation for Philip Glass in that music class that he was taking at Yale. I mean, it was a little heavy handed. So I, I think Oyeva was also in that music class with Nathan and that's why she chose Philip Glass. Glass. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I found the short program effective. I actually thought to myself, oh, well, I don't, I don't dislike this. I have to give credit where credit is due. I didn't mind it. And then of course the free skate came charging back with 10,000% of all the schlock and- Oh my God, I loved it though. Okay, when she kicks her leg up in that Beelman pose and then, or when she dramatically falls forward on the, it's giving us camp, Jonathan. Yeah, like, it's, it's quite campy, yeah. I'm not enjoying it for art. It is the campiest thing I have witnessed. But girl. that girl is reliving it every time. I, 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 I don't know. It, living it this year, one way or another. It's true. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah. Listen, this girl's going to be freaking rich. She's also going to need to probably pay for a trauma therapist, although I don't know if they believe in that in Russia. But she is going to be freaking rich and set for life. She play that victim card when everything comes out in the coming weeks give the tv interview have right. the tear i mean what is the excuse going to be right I mean, all the signs listen they're having hearings they, it's cya someone from within russia a sports agent said that they do have evidence of doping we heard that the b sample is positive from someone within sambo 70 so um, I would just- uh, But then remember they came back with this information where they said, oh, well, Valieva is not even in Sambo 70 anymore. But what was that all about? Because obviously they put her on the ice. Um, well, they were moving clubs, but I don't I don't know what you're referring oh, to. Oh, okay, sure. okay. They okay. are calling it like Chiburidza. I know that they are moving ranks eventually. So, but- Okay. I chose my words carefully with what I said there. So Jonathan, I am- Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, um, understood. Yeah. I just uh, thought it was one of their articles where like, the, who's the head of Sambo 70? Renat Lyshev. Yeah, I thought he and was usually the one he's that not allowed to speak, but he's the type where they call him after, you know, they, the, the report is known to call Renat after. Because he'll spill time. the beans accidentally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. He, remember, he's like, of course we take all the drugs. Only the legal ones, remember? Right. <laughs> you remember that quote? He's yeah. Incredible. He yeah. is like the kind of old booze bag um, administrator <laughs> that we could dream of. I okay. remember it was like the anniversary of Sambo 70 and he was in the white gloves and Medvedeva had been back for like two minutes. So they had her like raise the flag instead of Zagitiva. I mean, the whole thing is, this is the greatest shit show of a school we have ever <laughs> seen. Like, listen, it takes a lot to outdo the Caroli Ranch, right? But right. like the one- But they've thing, done it, yeah. The Corollis didn't have the camp factor as much as a Terry does. A Terry is inherently tacky and campy in the best way. And she has like millions of minions who will defend her to the death. There are people who act surprised that the girls are doping. Then there are the ones, oh my God, there was someone on Twitter this week who was like, I feel bad for Tukta Misheva and someone else. Imagine what they were thinking when Valieva's B sample came back and you're like, 
This is a part of the same system. Yeah, that's that's the argument for state sponsored. State sponsored means it's an all in kind of situation. Yeah. Sherbakova, who was on liquid and powdered food during the Olympics. I mean, it's a state system. So right. Right. I um, and then they of course they applauded Valieva's triple toe as if she had just done a quad. You know what I mean? Sometimes I wonder. I know the audience is enthusiastic. I'm not always unsure. There were lots of triple attempts that were applauded. And I thought, did the audience think that was a quad? Because that was I like-, like that they have they always know how to change the narrative, right? So now it's they're reverse victimizing, right? So they have set this in front with the hood intentional and the comments are coming out. I mean, they are incredible. We are forgetting no quad from Trusova, right? No quad from Valieva. Falls on quads from Petrosian and Akatieva. They weren't able to say, oh, look at your other competitions, look how much better we are. They couldn't really say it this week. Even Tuk Dimitriva fell on the on the second triple axle. Yeah. So, they weren't really able to, but the because of the theatrics and the show and the presentation and the red carpet, you've almost forgotten that the skating wasn't actually that good. Up to quote unquote their own standard. So yeah, not the standard of last year. Yes, it's a post Olympic year. Um, also, they've started having draft notices. Samarin got a draft notice, so this is what I think they should do to keep the ratings up. Because those men, did you see them in this competition, Jonathan? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll unpack it for sure. Yeah. Right. I think we, we decide who goes off to war based on the next. Before. And listen, Russia seems like the kind of country that would be on board for this, right? They are not a sentimental type. They are like cutthroat in it to win it. I think each time a guy goes out there, mops up the- Eight to stay home, okay. <laughs> Whoever is in last place, you're going. You're Your joining first the scent, okay. You will see Kolyadas skate clean like we've never seen before, okay? <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. No, I- Although the one, the one who delivered out of nowhere was my boy, Dimitri. Alia, he, he didn't want to get called up to go. He randomly was throwing out some big solid jumps. I mean, still sort of Listen, like ran out of steam. Amarin is but... like on the chopping block. So Alia, yeah. not me, honey. I am. Yeah. The... He hasn't I mean, skated well since you loved him the first go round. That's right. Like this is this was some of like his finer skating we've seen in, in a, quite a while from him. Okay. Yeah, I was I was impressed. But how about our friend Koyada? He has this going on. And then his free program is all the fingers. I was trying to remember, didn't didn't Armanov have a program like this, like in the mid nineties with like the tuxedo and like the white glove and the red glove or something like that. It just totally reminded me of that. And this is a great artist. Armanov? And remember Christina Jaco with the thing? Uh, That's right. right. (laughs) Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. But I mean, it, you, to me, there's just such a, do you not see what you have? Because he's, he's so balletic and just picture perfect. And for him to like, basically like, you know, when like people used to turn around and like make out with themselves from the back. So it looked like that, like that's what the opening started. Like it was just such. I was in a dance number where it went from whoop, there it is to I feel good. I have no idea why. It was 1994. And literally in the back, we had to turn around. We were like all like bump. Uh, and we're like, see, you did a Kolyada free skate. You just didn't know it. Yeah. You could tell that there is choreography in Kolyada's free skate, but that they watered it down so right. much. Yeah. To try to get him to skate clean, and it still didn't matter. Yeah. Occasional gorgeous squad and then an occasional pop. You know, I mean, more of the same, unfortunately, in that regard. I mean, he looked a little better without some of the pressure. Yeah. He still was my favorite of yeah. all of them. But well, he just moves the best, but. His camel, gorgeous. His yeah. locks, stunning. But, and because of course, that's where my boy Alia fails me because I do love the way he emotes and the way he just moves. And then he gets into a spin and you're like, how are you so good up until now? Like, I don't understand. But, but I liked Aliyev's material the most, actually. Although I will say, Mark, um, I thought his short program was great for him. I love it. I love the short program. It's the free skate where he's like, remember your first love. 
I was like, these are children. I, have they had their first love yet? Like, I don't know. What is he remembering it? Yeah, I didn't quite get the free as much. I am really into this Judy Garland and Mickey Mantle type relationship. This Rock Hudson and Doris Day situation going on with Christopher and Mark. I love it. Um, I love that it's in our faces more than Maren Honda and Shoma Una. Like, I am right, so right. Um, and I... I'm on board with it. Listen, I think Russia is getting their, they know how to get this publicity machine in action. These two kids seem great together. I'm all for it. Unfortunately, um, Mark is what Frank Carroll first referred to in an interview as a pond skater, where it looks like he taught himself how to do those quad jumps. I don't understand why Samadelkina thought it would be a good idea to go to Mark coach because she also seems to be suffering the same fate but when mark jumps i'm i don't know what lineage his coach is from but i mean it does not look like kudryatsev it does not look like nikolaev it does not look like mishan she um she, just hurl your body and just hope for the best that's a little know, bit in the the... gymnastics world they would refer to that as a ymca gymnast i don't know <laughs> what yeah she makes uh, i mean he makes Surya Bonali look like she's like a Tamara Moskvina pear girl. I just don't understand <laughs> like where- was, this... That was worth the wait. You got there. That was worth it. <laughs> I, I, it was, I mean, she makes Surya look like Dubova taught her skating skills. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. He... But you're, you're actually right to compare it to a lot of what we've been talking about with some of the French jumpers, like in the same way Kevin or Adam or Surya or Florent, like they just sort of had this like brave yes. hurl your body there and just see, see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. And some of the falls out in like those quad, quad attempts were, were very scary. I, I would imagine you take some tough falls uh, that way. He's very exciting to watch. I'm here for it. Yeah, I was like, like costumes. I'm here for Trusiva watching him and having a nervous reaction. It was easier to find her reaction videos than it was to find his actual program. Yeah, yeah. The reason for that, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and speaking of crazy falls, I was intrigued by Semenenko because I thought, this is also after that horrendous fall we saw him take in that um, that show program. You know, he didn't really attempt any quads here, uh, but I I would imagine it's very nervy to try to attempt those again. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. What did you think of the new truce of a look? We didn't see a lot of her. You know, we only saw the short program. Yeah, I was going to say, I could only find the short, which was fine. Again, more of the same. I mean, I, I didn't know if we were going to see her. I didn't know if she had sort of kind of had it with the, the whole thing. I mean, they're making good money to show up this year. Okay. And the more these other girls have surgery, I'm sure the appearance fees go up. Well, that's the thing. And you know, this, what was a giant stable of junior skaters that were ready to take the reins seems less, less deep at the moment. I, you know, I thought I was actually most impressed with Tuk Dimisheva here. Um, were you? With, well, consider for what I expected, because even at the test skate sometimes in the past, she wouldn't have had any of the triple axles yet at times. Why do we like her? Because we're rooting for her because she seems to have defied the odds of their own program. And she's kind of trashy and tacky and owns it, right? Like she she's decide. kind of doing her own thing. There's, there's less of a veneer between her and the public. What I, is that? Basically, she was miming. She was getting in touch with her inner Danny G. It yeah. was boring music. Just bring back the music from last year. No one wants to see you pretend to be pretty. You're not good at it, okay? Right. She couldn't even do it. We want to see the armography. And the short worked, didn't the it? Because worked. she was having fun and the thing. audience likes to have fun with her. So yeah. then suddenly for her to go gravitas, it was a disconnect. Yeah. Boring as anything. Okay, it was my least favorite free program. And we have seen some real disasters from her in the past. The Hall of the Mountain King, whatever she did when she tried to make the Olympics in 2018. Right. Uh, there are years I don't even remember, right? And it's it's tough. She 
just go back to last. I don't, I, again, I said, I don't know why she gets a new choreographer each season. I right. really just changed the song. This is just. Yeah. The, yeah. Maybe she could do a Latin mambo. Like this is really the pick. She could have done Mark short program. Yeah. She would have done it better. You know what was my favorite part of Tukamishiva? Her walkout and her look. I mean, her personality <laughs> is great. The program is awful. Um, but she, she knows how to sell it when it's designed to be fun. I, I, I don't buy it. These other girls, I think she'll be in the mix at Russian Nationals with Akatieva and Petrosian. I mean, the other ones look like more of the same. Yeah. So uh, it looks like Akatieva had a knee injury over the summer and is just getting back. And it looks like Petrosian is trying jumps that she hasn't quite mastered. I, it just looks like more of the same. I prefer Katyeva to Petrosian. I do as well. I was gonna say, I would, In I would. Short. Okay. I, Katyeva isn't as extended and it looks like Katyeva is like the new Valieva, like they put the most work into her, right? Yeah. And it looks, she's very similar to Valieva's style and technique. But I did have a musical question for you. Oh, how exciting. Which music was worse for your ear? Mm. Was it Petrosian's or was it a Katieva? And which one of them sounded like it had the buzzer, kind of like when you hear yard work going on outside? And yes, <laughs> wait, wasn't that Petrosian? It, what was that? It was not helping. I, I didn't, and again, I was like, is this happening in the arena? Is this designed to be happening in the music? It was just sort of noise. Uh, yeah, Petrosia, for me, all of the all of the material was a giant mess. Yeah. What was that? No one knows. No one knows. Both, and, and how come every Russian skater well, inevitably, like they will always have to do, especially if you're an ice dancer, like you always, you have to do Spartacus at some point. Right, right. And like almost every Russian figure skater is like, you're going to have the Arabian program. Like right. at some point you yes. will in, in yes. <laughs> do something, yes. 100 percent yes yeah. <laughs> and apparently <laughs> now wait, wait. julia laudava had a girl she was apparently a mission student right she came in with music over the summer it was never explained to me the full reason of what she did but she would go and skate to this music it still had the voiceovers that it was taken from youtube from someone else's comp competition and it had like to like commentary Yes, and it had like Dimitri Gugliel, yes, over it. It was incredible. And she like did the arm and I would just kind of look at Julia and she was like, Dave, I didn't do it. And I was like, I, listen, you didn't You're scrap part it. of it now, honey. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the other one is apparently Elvis. We saw Mishra Galyamov with this like, yeah. an, such an odd Elvis cut. And I okay. thought, oh my gosh, have we learned nothing from Kolya Da's program? There are a lot of reasons to love Elvis in figure skating. He had an age inappropriate relationship with Priscilla, which is very common in this sport. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are many different eras of Elvis. There was handsome Elvis. There's also like fat druggy drag Elvis that died on a toilet. That's the one that the Russians seem to really embrace from- They YouTube. gravitate towards that era. Yes, correct, yeah. I didn't know if Mishina was more unflattering or if Galyamov was more unflattering in these costumes in the free. They're truly horrific. And, and they're gorgeous people. And, and that red, it just looked so, it was just such not. I am not, a fan of red. Yeah, when it works. What in God's name was he wearing? I. <laughs> it was like someone took Brian Orser's Calgary costume and they were like, now make it like Elvisy. And it didn't work. It didn't work. You know, <laughs> Canadian military program, Elvis program, they shouldn't be so similar. <laughs> the entire country must have like zero self-awareness about what is going on sometimes. I don't understand. I think Russia's in a really difficult era with their national identity and what is happening in the world. Being insular is not helping them. This is, this is not good. Uh, well, and it, I was intrigued how much Putin loving was going to be going on at this event. And we did see a bit, but it wasn't the driving force of the event either. So it was interesting. I know. 
Okay. Also, Teresa and Morozov doing Ave Maria, and then last year's program, and they were actually more consistent than usual. But at least he had a little bit of a mess up in the free, so it felt like home. You know, I just, I, I didn't want to feel like the world was truly upside down. I was glad he had a little bit of an imperfection in the free. Um, Eugenia and Vlad. Give us the familiar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The Russians love an Ave Maria. They love a different version. You know, they have to be their own version of everything. Right, of course, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you were to but say no, I didn't see Wait, wait, Jonathan. If you were to say the sky is blue, they'd say, no. Sky is cerulean. You know, like they just exactly. have <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it's a nice color shade. <laughs> um, but no Boykova. I didn't see Boykova. No, in no okay. Injury. So okay, minor micro trauma, as they would say. They're they'll be back. Okay, don't okay. worry. All right. The girl who once like threw her credential, <laughs> they will be back, and that I'm happy for it because, frankly. After, have you seen some of the ISU pair competitions this year? I mean, we needed them. Yeah, yeah. And also, there have been some weird versions of A Time for Us that have been done. You know that there's a version with Celtic singers that sing A Time for that. Yes, you have to look up the Celtic women oh. or Celtic singers who do A Time for Us. It's okay. the strangest thing you will ever hear. I, I saw it on iTunes when searching for a version. Okay. <laughs> You you got to like it. this Moraviova version that the Plushenka girl did might be the most heinous of all time, and I didn't know what the miming was from. He his skaters made me really appreciate the merits of Danny G. Mm, yeah, he he's doing that style. He is at a higher level. Yeah. in Russian skating. Okay. That they're all, and this is the thing about when you sort of have a monopoly on all the winners is everyone just starts copying the formula. And I just can't stand this formula. I was disappointed that Valjeva didn't go the opera book route because usually he's like the more expensive version that a Terry will spend the money on an opera book program for the truly great skater, right? For Zhenya Medvedeva, right? No, this was Danny G's opus. You know, this was yeah. his. Yeah, um, Magnificat, if you will. I, but I, uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone of importance withdrew from the test skates uh, in right. ice dance. It was unfortunate. But yeah. we did get to see um, the junior team I like of Krilova. I mean, yeah. in the rhythm dance. I mean, but I like, you know, they were in the free too, but what I like okay. them is in the past, Krilova has one aesthetic. And like, we've forgiven this because they're so freaking pretty. And there's so few of her skaters sort of in the mix that when we see it, her formula just does seem like a, a breath of fresh air because so few other people use that formula. But yes, she does have And we formula. do like practice her pronunciation, so. I need you to say this again. Wait, she's practicing, she yelling at me. Valeri Angelopal. 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 Angelopo. Ah, ah, Angelopo. Uh, Angelopo. Did she even? Angelopo. Angelopo. A is like an A. Ah. And they always uh, sound like they're yelling, Jonathan, because they are. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of forward placement. Yeah. Nina <laughs> Petrenko was coaching Kirk the other week. Kirk, you can't do a sit spin. <laughs> That was the easiest bit I could find. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's question. what you want. Is Plushenka? Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> People are asking. That was going another way. Yeah. Okay. That was going another way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So. But now I, you've, once you spot the formula in someone, it is hard to unsee it. Go watch their old programs and then go watch Hawaii and Baker when they were doing the Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. program from that era the amelie yeah. it's exact same but let's go with what she knows yeah like marina zueva at least there's a tasteful sameness to it right that's the thing if uh, it's i understand formulas happen it's we get it you know it's happening with ben wide has happened in the past with other choreographers like but when you like the formula 
you you forgive it. But you know, with the Danny G formula, I can't stand that formula. So to constantly have to see it is tough. But for you know, for Krilova, I was like, yeah, why not? Yeah, it's often that it carries so many damn skaters that we see the same thing over and over. It's when Marina and Igor had all those same ice stands to you. All of them. Yeah, a hundred percent. That anyone who comes in and does anything different is suddenly that much more interesting. Yes. And again, because for whatever reason, Krilova doesn't have the number of teams that you think she might be able to. Her teams just always seem like a breath of fresh air. Is she finally going to learn how to politic with so many either ice dancers withdrawn from the competition? I am not sure. That's One would hope. One would hope. You know, there was almost, it almost seemed like they were going to consider allowing the Russians back as. Um, neutral athletes like sort of the way that they compete as the roc but with what's happening in the war as of the last couple of days i, I don't know if that's good yeah. but it, it yeah. felt like the tide was moving and there are different people playing different games because of this wait out period so because we've heard about the possibility of uh annabelle morozov skating for france but it looks like they were planning to go internal this year because remember that doesn't count as competing internationally and then they right. And they could avoid pissing off Russia. Maybe Kolya could make some of that Russian money choreographing, and then they would go. Yeah. But it seems like Diana and Gleb, they already applied for the green card, so they could not go to the test skates. Ah, okay. Okay. And John, why, uh, you, why, why, would, issue. why would you get married in the US and apply for a green card if you knew that you were going to have to return to Russia? Yeah, knowing that it puts a moratorium on so much travel as you, as you sort those things out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Funny that, you know. Yeah, they really they really get up in arms about her every time she comes up. Well, I mean, it seems pretty clear, but they still withdrew from Ardmore. What, to just keep the, the hysteria down? Um, well, I imagine that there's a lot going on because the Terry still has to play ball within Russia. Right. <laughs> there's a lot happening there. Yeah. And everyone is trying to figure out what's going on. But remember, they do they are in two different skating clubs. That's fun. They didn't just join US figure skating. They made sure to get their politics in order and they're aligned with Sean Redstaff, who is a very influential US judge to make. And it's so sad because they're like American fans. It's always hard when people don't get that, like, yes, ice dance is a sport, but it's about as much as what happens on the ice is the politics and the gamesmanship and the packaging. And the perception of the team. Yeah, of course. This team has their politics in order. I mean, this, you're like, uh, well, she was going to make sure of that. Yeah. Browns, I mean, that's what Browns she's best at. Licks chance in hell of uh, competing against this powerhouse. Yeah. <laughs> not to do with the skating. And then people are like, what about Carrera and Panamarenko? And it's like, well, did you see them last season? Because I think a Terry did when uh, she chose Yeah, me. and the judges kind of let them go as well, you know, I mean. But you know who's doing the most this season? Marie France, okay? I love her the most, all right? But this like whole new like branch campus of like, uh, it's like how Penn State has University Park and then they've got 14 branch campuses where they put like, yeah, yeah, understood. Yeah. You said like in Penn State when you're like, if you can get a certain GPA at a branch campus, you can go to University Park for your junior and senior year. Okay. It feels like it's happening at I am like, and what's gonna like if Scott gets a really good team, what happens? Will they go head to head with Marie France or will they steal them? How what will happen? Yeah. They I mean, wasn't that sort of that question? Wasn't it the Sambo 70 sort of team that like they would get them ready and then they'd swipe them when they were ready, they felt. Right? Is that, is this like a- I mean, that's the way all of Russia is for a Terry? Yeah, is this like a feeder program into I, the I imagine there is a talented nine-year-old somewhere. A Terry goes, bring her to me. And everyone in Russia goes, yes. Okay, so if Marie France sees that someone that Scott Moyer has, has a lick of talent, is she like, bring them to me? Like, yeah. I, Granted, where is his brand? The caliber of his teams do not seem to be in any danger of competing with the Marie France teams. But let's say but, theoretically that they did. Right? But just do, don't you think that helps Scott actually hone his coaching in these yes. early years? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, everyone is saying 
because Carrera and Panamarenko had a drop off last year, there's been a lot of shade thrown Scott's way about whether or not he could actually coach. But they did add Hubble and Diaz to the team. Uh, Panamarenko also had an ankle injury last year. And the thing that Igor Spielbahn is really good at doing is hiding the weaknesses of skaters in choreography. Yeah. And the, I would say the career on Pomeranko's weaknesses weren't as hidden last season as they were previously. So. Mm. Uh, well, because again, from like the viewpoint of someone like Scott or someone who's trying to do it, it's like, let's expose the thing and let's work on it. But then of course it, it reveals it. Yeah. 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 Tricky. Tricky. So yeah, it's, it's one of those. Thing. But Lila and Lewis, they got an 85 here. Okay, now a week ago we were like, you know, it's really going to be hard for them to win Europeans, but Marie France has judges from every country. Well, she had judges from just about every country on the panel at Nebelhorn. They got an 85. It's a meteoric rise. And, and to me, it reminds me sort of of how they were trying to approach last season with the um olivia and um adrian, adrian. Mm. um but where they were like let's get them out early let's give them exciting material and we are going to just like oversaturate the competitive market with well, them without julin it's like it's like having batman with no rivals when, <laughs> right like the, there's no joker like what's happening yeah batman never has to get dressed up he's just hanging at the at the lair yeah it's Harry Potter <laughs> without Voldemort. like what happened right right, right. Like, what's going on he, sh he shall not be named okay that's what right that's happening right here like uh, we're, so marie france only has to worry about barbara like frankly For, looks like the british could take them right right, right. madison chalk world champion world potentially champion. I, I see that coming down the pike. What do you mean potentially? Well, I mean, we've not seen their material, Unless but I would assume Barbara, it's Tanya like Tanya Harding, Evan Bates, which Barbara might do based on her temper. Just with her eyes. <laughs> Unless she pulls a Katarina Vitt and stares at Evan when he goes through the twizzles. <laughs> World champion. And yeah. based on uh, our friend Vladimir Putin escalating the war, they might win next year again, too. It might be, listen, two time. I, I mean, what That's do you think? Are, do you think we're looking at a US, Italy, Great Britain podium? Yes. Yeah, for world? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think so as well. And frankly, if Marie France has her way, maybe US, Great Britain, Maybe she'd even throw Piper and Paul a bone and give them a bronze. You That's never know. Okay? Yeah, we have not seen Piper and Paul yet. That is very true. Um, but they are not. Yeah. A, they are not. Th their dance school doesn't have 14 different countries. So I think maybe they'd be going for a bronze. Yeah. Yeah. But this the the way they have maneuvered this British rise is is quite remarkable. And thankfully, we love them. Yeah. I mean, well, and again, so let's let's break this down. Seeing the Canadian team and seeing the US team, we we just got more of the same stuff. Oh, look, here's a long, slow one, like love song that's going to be our entire free dance. They were Listen. interchangeable. I zoned out. I wasn't it was a step it. up for what we've seen from Kiliakov in the past, but it does seem like this year's version of Green and Barson's last year. Just yes. in red. Yeah. Just in red. Okay. It, it just, it, neither program for the Canadians or the, the US were doing it for me. So then subsequently, when you get the British team that comes out with interesting high energy material, you're suddenly interested. But I have to tell you, props to Alison Reed. Everything she did also looked different in their own way. So you're suddenly like, aha, you're giving me something that's not the same old emo ballad and same recycled moves. It was different things in their rotational lift, different kind of music choices, just like the British, in my opinion, especially in ice dance, you're suddenly that much more interesting. I'm suddenly rooting for you more than everyone else. I did think it was funny. Last week, someone pointed out to me, you know, Allison was at the competition and they had to have like the local Lithuanian coach with them. And it was like, wait, the IM school has how many dozens of coaches and they couldn't send, I don't know, even the synchro guy to them? No. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but they did, they were, Roman was with them this week. Yes. So good for all. 
Yes. But like, but Allison also bringing us some like interesting moves. There's that rotational moment where she's upside down in the very beginning of the free dance. And again, I was just like, and we'll talk about it with Deanna also. You're just sort of like, oh, different moves, yeah. different moves from everyone else. I plus five, you know. Yeah. So she's from the ice house. She is from Kolya Morozov. That is some lineage in the ice. Yeah. Dance. And gave us that razzle dazzle we're she looking had for. Him. She had him choreograph programs. He might not even remember choreographing them based on what happened, what's going on at the Ice House back in the day. All right. Yeah. That... It's one thing, it, you know, I, obviously. I will always... Oh, wait, wait, Jonathan. What is your favorite Allison Reed memory? I don't know that I have one. Wait, right. tell me. This is like the most skating thing ever. But in Vancouver, I remember PJ Kwong announcing everyone. And the reeds went back to back at the Olympics. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the sibling first, were they representing Japan at the time? And she was, rep and, the, and they were from New Jersey. Right. Representing Japan. And then she was there from New Jersey. Was this when she was with Otar Japarit? I forget if she was Jordan, Georgian or Israeli. I yeah, forget. she's like, she's been a few. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's... <laughs> But you okay. know, I, I mean, this this pairing works. Yeah, I mean, wait, wait. You know how people are. You know how people are like gender fluid nowadays, right? Like, I think in I stands we should be like, she's nationally fluid, like Isabella Tobias, nationally fluid. Yes, Paletto, nationally fluid. Correct. Korea, Correct. He was Korean. He was Norwegian. Norwegian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japanese, yeah. American. We used to say a nationally promiscuous. Now, yes. But now, people, but I like people, your fluid, fluid words. People are too touchy nowadays. They don't understand jokes. They don't mm. like them. You mm -hmm. Nationally fluid. They transcend borders. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, for me, for skating, I've always gotten that. Because to me, same as obviously we'll see with De Deanna, it's like, you got to find the partner that's fitting. And if you happen to be from two different countries, like, again, I don't really care, but those that seem to be so nationalistic in their support. I love athletes, to changes. watch the 2008 Worlds and hear P.J. Kwongo on CBC Country. Igor is from Yekaterinburg, Russia. Kristen is from California. They represent Azerbaijan. Or as she said, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Freaking love it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's very funny. And Kristen would defend it. Okay. She would look at you in the face and she'd be like, "Yeah. Yes, we did. Yes, yes we I were, did. and yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> we we're a lot better than some of those teams ahead of us." So like, Ooh, okay. Okay. Right. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> amazing well and again like Deanna also a great example like and she's somebody I hope that federation is like sending her a gift bag she hey, no we have a bone to pick with Deanna Stilato oh no no no, no. Jimmy. John, we've supported her for how long yeah when she was with when she was against Jennifer Kirk when she was she was accepting everyone's tags, but now that she's like playing the Miss America game, I didn't see her, you know, we tagged her on something on- <gasps> She didn't give you a retweet to the skating lesson? She was like- all Dun, the, dun, dun. She was like all <laughs> up with the Jackie Wong's of the world when he was mm. like all of a sudden getting on the Deanna train. He'd mm. be like, she last one in 1999. Let me tell you something. It is not lost on me. Adult skaters from all over the freaking world dream of winning gold in Oberstdorf, and Deanna did this weekend, okay? She is not just an adult <laughs> yeah. skater. She is a champion. Adult yeah, skater. yeah. Champion. She and again- better than what? Madison Chalk. She looked, wait. Have you ever seen Deanna look genuinely happy before after a skating performance? Like, what has happened? What well, even here, she had to like wait to give herself permission to be happy. Did you see that? Like, she was assessing, she was analyzing, and then she decided, like, oh, okay, I'm happy. <laughs> I, usually, they have this guy named Ian, who Ian used to be an assistant for Bruno Marcotte. And you know how Bruno is? He's so nice and laid back. Deanna wants none of that shit. She had the most terrifying person, and anyone will tell you that Jose Picard is terrifying. 
Okay. okay. She coached Bruno. She coached Julie. She coached Marie France. She coached Shaylin. Do you know Shaylin has a brother? She coached him too. Right. 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 She coached singles and pairs and Caitlin Osmond. All she did it all. Okay. You go back and watch like the 1994 Olympics. That Jose Picard. Her hair looks the same. She <laughs> that's terrifying. She spends her winners in Florida. Well, she brought Deanna to this competition and she's never skated better. And I don't know which girl is more intense or terrifying. They need to bring okay. to every competition. Okay. You Ian, I'm sure you're a nice guy. Go have a beer. Go st just stay catch up with them at the hotel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what? We'll still pay you the money. Bring Jose. She knew she didn't smile. Deanna was ecstatic in the kiss and cry. She went like, You did it. Yeah. She's like, those devil sows, really? I was just gonna say. <laughs> also, I was in a trance in this performance. I only counted two lifts until I rewatched it. I mean, like I was just like, because oh, sometimes when Deanna skates, you know. She wants it so badly that sometimes she can't just let it happen. Right. It's almost like clearing the way for the thing to happen instead of making it happen in those moments. But she did seem a bit more settled in the body here and the lift positions were stunning. And again, it's, you know, we've used the term vocabulary of movement. Her, her, theirs is just so different than everyone else's. Interesting entrances, interesting lift positions, interesting, interesting, interesting. And it was I'm now engaged. Skating. They had big yeah. long lines throughout yeah. the big twist and the big lifts. And the side by side jumps were good. And it was grand. And I was like, and how about when she's like <gasps> loving, like living her life? Like she's yeah. like. She's like, I am the queen. And they all have to kiss her ass in Canada. And, and they didn't support her before, okay? Like no. they just got on board like right now. She didn't have funding for a lot of this time, okay? Because she's not a citizen. And like, there are all these like rules and he's still coaching, like, uh-uh. Like still technically they're like shit in Canada. Like until they start throwing the money their way. And that right. usually happens after nationals. So, okay. and remember Megan told us they don't make the same money in Canada that they do in the US. So, okay. She's not making that Alexa money yet, right? Okay. I mean, and again, the, the Federation should That's be thrilled funny. she's still there, you know? And that Max, with every week that he puts up with her and delivers, he becomes more attractive, okay? I don't, I mean, I'm not so into that free program costume he's wearing. I think he could go a little more Mervyn Tran. It's a, it's a little... Um, Is that the black sheer? The black sheer, but he has got like the silver stuff up here. What's happening? Okay. Make yeah. him look hot in like a cut up. Deanna, what is he doing? All right. Simplify it. Yeah. Simplify it. All right. Also, like, she's 39. Her face is not. Okay. And like, <laughs> I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> she, uh, she could tell us what she's, she looks great. Um, yeah, I didn't miss KMT at all. But I did like that KMT decided to be like, wait a second, I exist. She decided to throw a softball. I was like, Jonathan would love this. She's like, can we not talk about size? So it was very KMT being very bold on Twitter about something that everybody already agrees with. So okay. that was good. You're Got like, it. kind it. of like the story of her career, right? Like, not really. I mean, you know where I stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I've just been, she's been a little annoying in retirement. I'm a little more on your team and I've been on more... This whole, like, she's a performance coach, but then acts like apologetic, but then acts like she's being very Canadian in retirement. I want to see her be a little more herself and bold. She's having skater identity issues, and it's a little... I wanted to see more of herself in her skating at times as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and those are hard things to ask and hard things to sort through. And again, as, as we transition, perhaps, to... Maybe you don't see enough... You might not see a lot of Eric in his skating, but you see a lot of him on his Instagram. So there's that as well. Um, yeah. But I didn't miss them at all. You're like, wait, a year ago, it was all about KMT and Eric and Deanna and Max were better than both of them. Like, by yeah, well, more interesting anyway. Yeah. I still wish that we got to see Zabiaka with the Daleman brother. Like that would have been. Yeah, yeah. Any footage from that would have been interesting. Yeah. Come on. We could have had the tennis player here and you, and you know how accepting and encouraging Russia is. They'd be, <laughs> they cover all of, they'd never cared so much about Canadian pairs until they had a lesbian, former Russian, former Estonian skating with a Daleman brother. And they would have given right. up. Yeah. Wall. She would have, yeah. It would think? not have been a good homecoming for her at one point. <laughs> yeah. I, oh man. Um, but I mean, even in talking about like KMT, it's fascinating because again, there seems to be 
this rush in the PR of skating or the branding of people outside of the actual sport um, to learn their lesson and to have come full circle. And their takeaway is now this. So obviously KMT struggled, but now she's telling us like, but she's figured it all out. And that was always for me, the troubling bit about Gracie is no one ever seemed to let her have the downtime, have the healing time, sort things out for her emotionally and individually. Instead, it was a flurry of articles that came out like the day after that world. And she's like, here's the lessons I've learned. I'm all better now. And there seemed to be such a rush to the recovery of that. And I think even though we had seen her training so well this summer, when you see something that happened like in the short program here, you see that maybe the insight isn't as settled yet as, as we would hope. Okay, so I have two different thoughts because I, I was going to comment on something you said and then you were going to Gracie. The one thing I'm just going to say about skaters in general when they just retire, that's really annoying. There's a thing in skating where people feel like they're too good to coach, right? Like they're too successful. So it's like a step down. So there's this whole thing what skaters do where they're like, I'm going to be a performance coach or I'm going to rebrand an edge class as like a skating fitness class. So it's like they, they can make the money but not have to actually coach deal them. with that title because they they think the title is sort of like I actually respect that Eric Bradford like just coaches or choreographs like yeah actually... yes and wouldn't that be such a, I mean again coming from singing to me it's about like carrying on the tradition and continuing oh, the lineage and you doing all this you are stuff. a singer no you'd be like I will be addiction coach call oh. Oh, and then you yeah. overcharge I will be your mental performance coach. I have zero qualifications, zero degree in psychology, but you know what? I never figured it out in my own career. Gymnasts but... do it too, by the way, like the McKenna Kellys and the Lexi Priest. Oh, it's all bullshit. And they package it. And the little girls who look up to them, who, cause it's a, it's a whole thing where we like admire success and fame as opposed to like qualifications. The right. This reads you. Right. Little girls will of course like pay for it. Oh yeah. yeah. The parents, oh, they worked with a blah, blah, blah Olympian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But John, KMT's whole Olympic season was like, I'm burned out and pissed off. And now use the lessons that I've learned. <laughs> like, who right, that? Well, that, but again, to me, it's that rushing of the lessons learned. And I was like, you haven't taken the time to process all of that yet. I mean, think about everyone we're talking about with still Olympic burnout and now imagine all that she was facing. And again, that's what, that's what brings me back to this crazy thing is these sorts of things take time to marinate. And if you're just like at it, like kind of trying to keep it up and yet spinning all these stories about how you're, you fixed everything and you're all better now. I don't know, that has got to mess with you. That, that, that would not be good for me. Well, Gracie's training had been going well, but then she remember she went to do a seminar like a week and a half ago in Alaska, and then with the time change and the lost it. This, I mean, training here, it looked like she hadn't done a triple lutz before. Yeah. And some of the mistakes. That, so I'm curious how they are going to get her on track for Skate America because she can do it. We saw glimpses of it. She actually didn't give up in the free. Were, I was going to say first I saw so first I watched the the short she's program. Given up on herself in many performances before. Yes, like see her give up on herself. But yeah. what I did like so then I saw the result of the free skate before I saw the actual skate and I thought oh for goodness sakes, damn it! And then I actually saw the skate and it was more hopeful. I guess you know at first I thought oh no I've done it again. I got excited, and I should know better than to get excited. Um, but, but seeing the free skate, I thought this wasn't an implosion necessarily in the way it could have been. Um, and at this point, I think any sort of perseverance and glimmer of hope is appreciated. I know I Michael Sonasi has been working with her. He's smart and he still trained himself as an adult and can do like shows, right? And he's in our age bracket and can still do all of his damn triples. He is interesting because the way he set the program, they do a triple toe and a triple sow at the end, which is smart. And those are easier jumps for her. And in the past, she's tried to throw in the second Lutz and the flip right. at the end of the program. And you were like, Gracie, you could never do the flip on a good day. What do you- Optimize her? your chance for success. Yeah, exactly. Now they have it in the front. So it's like, at least like it's realistic. You could tell that this has been thought out. 
and we're not just trying to like relive the glory days, right? Yeah, because then she can at least say, well, I can at least eke out the toe, as opposed to how on earth am I now going to have to do a second Lutz right now? Yeah. The toe, she let it go a little bit, but then she did the sow at the end. But you could see in the past, she absolutely would pop that sow. Right. Uh, right. And I thought, okay, and she did the second Lutz. And thank God they took out the back spiral, which she right. always would mess up every single time after Worlds. So I thought it was hopeful, but they need to really get it together. And if they want her to do well at Skate America, I feel like U.S. Figure Skating should throw her some coins and be like, please just run your programs and just do a really good job for us. It'll make U.S. Figure Skating look like they support their skaters. It will make a, a whole good store. I would bullshit. Do you, do you think it's just like a repetition of, of program, like kind of training consistency yeah. situation? Okay. And As opposed to she, like getting she, irked. I think Gracie, I think she needs to find success and what success can be now, not trying to chase what success was in the past right. and, and believe that she can be good again and deserves it without maybe worrying what happened when she was number one and her life was chaotic. I think that that right. really has a lot to do with. Yeah. Um, that subtle steps forward are still counting, even if it's just a toe, just a toe and a sow at the end. By doing it clean, you're doing yourself. More. I think she could end her career on a really solid note, and maybe she won't be world champion, but she might be known for being a really fantastic skater and yeah. coming full circle, and that would be bigger than that. Just yeah. And again, but to me, the clumsy part of whoever's helping her behind the scenes, like branding wise or managerial wise from years past, is they tried to sell that narrative to us already. And I was like, it was too soon for that narrative, unfortunately. Well, but You knew who yeah. represented her. But yeah. um, what I would think, but they're also trying to help her make money at the same time, which she needs to do. Yeah. And everyone wants to like throw her a bone, but it is right. too soon, what you're saying. Right. But I do think that there's a thing where she's like kind of a legend in the sport of that and that level of talent. No coach that she's with, unless it's one of the coaches from before who was maybe too on the hard. I don't think that's the answer, yeah. So I think it, she really needs that kind of firm coach who's not going to be abusive, but who's gonna hold her accountable. Yes, that's what they need to find because I'm sure that there are a lot of coaches who would be intimidated to coach her or afraid of pushing her too hard because they don't want to be like damaging to her. Of course. Yeah. And she also needs to respect them. So I think that's where they need to really find that level. And, the, and I don't think that the team is right. Just I don't think that the, the dynamic on the team is right. It doesn't mean that the people are bad, but like who's in charge and who is setting what and all of that. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you want to be empathetic and you want to view someone like that as a colleague versus like the traditional sort of like I'm up here, you're down here, do as I say sort of dynamic. But then again, how, how do you hold it accountable when it's kind of getting wishy-washy and it's sort of like you want to give the space, you want to give the warmth, but yet you kind of need to make sure that some stuff happens. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky line to walk. A lot of skaters make this mistake. Remember when Patrick Chen was the best skater on earth in the middle of 2012? And then he said, I am the best. I am going to let a modern dance teacher lead my team. And you're like, wait a second. And you're just placate me. Yeah. You're Patrick Chan, they're a modern dance teacher. You know what? He was never as successful ever again. Right. Yes, he did a great short program at the 2013 Worlds, but the free was a freaking mess, right? Right. He never was the same skater. You need right. that balance. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought Luna Hendricks did her job here. She looks like she's Cowrie's main competition this season. She looks like she's got like a... Uh, I do love her skating. Easy, breezy route to being European champion this yes, year. Yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 again, I, I love her skating very much. I love what she represents. I love the lines she can hold. Um, for me personally, these two programs miss the mark in terms of the angle they're taking. Sort of like when um, Adam was advising Mariah for a while and you're like, I feel like you're turning her into something she's not necessarily with this music. Charm, though? Has she ever had truly like a program that you thought that was well wrapped? Like, you know, it was not so not much, ever. but she has a line like she doesn't need this like 
pop music or whatever was happening in that free skate music, like give her something beautiful. Just let her be beautiful. That's why we love her. It's because she's a beautiful woman doing beautiful things on the ice. Give us some beautiful music that, uh, that clears the way for her to do that and be rewarded. Um, and this sort of fought that almost, this is more like Tukdamisheva kind of stuff. Um, I wouldn't I mean, go that far. I thought but it, you know what I mean. Yeah, like it's for a, sh- a razzle dazzle showgirl kind of approach, and she has such elegant long edges and stuff like that. So I would want something that matches that ideally. Her jumps have a little bit of a French quality, where you think I've never seen technique or entrances like that before. But mm. interesting. And like a cat, somehow saves some landings you'd think might not work. <laughs> but there's yeah. also like a. Uh, there's something easy about rooting like she's easy to root for and yes 100 percent. 100 percent. she seems tougher than a mariah bell like she wants to win more now yes. she's rising to the occasion so yeah. that's, there's a centered quality to her as a person when she's skating that i like you think thank god because it's not like where you thought okay it's going to be cowry against wakaba and then you know what will happen with wakaba so it's like okay right. we have someone who's rising to the occasion there are no Russians this season. We need someone to do well. And she seems yeah. like she has that kind Although of- Although I'm throwing Yalem in the mix too, because oh, I had- the yeah. Jonathan. yeah, I know, I know, yeah. yeah. Yes, and frankly, we need more top contenders. So right. Yalem, we don't know who she is as much as we kind of have a sense of who Luna is or who Kauri is. See, and I would, I guess her material could have told me more about who she really is. I felt this showed me that Luna can sell this music because she was told she had to. I think that Luna's uh, material tells us who, what her coach and choreographer look like in the Kiss and Cry. And that's they- what I mean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> So there it is. They seem yeah. very nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's through their lens. They're cre- I mean, it has a bit of a My Fair Lady quality to it. You know, like this is this is what we perceive for you. And I was like, I, I just love when skaters and especially a skater of her age can probably do this is really get in touch with themselves and say, what skater do I want to be? Uh, like, I want her to be the CEO of her own board. And instead, I think she's just a board member among others on her. I think her choreographer is a real diva, and I think that he brings that out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, otherwise, I thought Maddie Skizas doing well. Tough free skate, better uh, better in the short. Yeah. Still needs to really work on expanding the skating, but she does look like she's becoming more confident. Uh, mm. Time. So, and she's getting a lot of experience now. This is her. Third yeah. season at the top, really second big international season. So I think we will see more from her in this. But okay, the men's event. Kazuki, I mean, I think what we love about him is he's so brilliant and he's a total Jeremy Abbott, Johnny Weir, Sasha Cohen. Like, you know it, you're in for a rough ride with his career. You you know it, right? Like yeah. we, he's just so wonderful yeah. and so talented and so beautifully inconsistent and right but seems to be hard working and well so his short program had that happy jazz or whatever it was called and it, he was but he was still able to to be charming and all these sorts of things the free skate music was such anxiety inducing music to just listen to for me. There was like- Little Mouse by Johann Strauss. No, was that what I was listening to? That was his free skate? Yes. Oh my gosh, then I'm embarrassed. I'm making a mistake. I am thinking of something. Marilyn Charlie did it, everyone said it was brilliant. No, 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 I love Flater Mouse. but it was a little frantic to him because he was falling during Jonathan. Yeah, well, that's the other thing, like, especially with that kind of music that the inner rhythm is so, so driving and so forward moving that it could it could rush your timing, Yeah, you know? But now I'm sort of like having, I'm very confused. Who's and he like better? plays the conductor, but the oh, end yeah. is real jazzy and fun. Um, what on earth am I talking about? It was like, 
someone was skating to rock music. Okay, forget it. I, re- I, re- I, I withdraw the comment. <laughs> But the he short was obviously a tough one. Yeah. Was, all I could think of when he was skating to last year's program was Jonathan Byer going more of the same. I, 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 that it's what I say. It's more of the same. Like we know what's coming. We see the shirt. We see the thing. Same with the short. You know, it's like Keegan doing Keegan. And, you know, we root for Roman. We've lit candles for Roman in the past. More of the same. Here we got, got this beautiful short program. And the, the, yeah. I think he should use being an Olympian for his job, for his uh, college application, get into a good communication school for video editing because he's so talented, it is just impossible to watch. And then like he took his shoes off and the kiss and cry was sitting there like this. Uh, you're like, oh my God, it is just a mess. And they were just acting like, oh, they, they didn't even seem disappointed, you know? Yeah. It was like, oh, he was in first. This obviously, I, I did he miss a spin? How many jumps did we miss? What was happening? Like, it's, I, I don't know what the problem is. But you, if you watch his video blogs, he will talk himself out of, in a protective way, like the Olympics to Worlds, that that was a win. And you're like, what's that a win? Because his actual potential is up here. Well, and that's the thing. Does he not realize that? Like, I mean, with that quad sow and his ability to move the way he can on ice, if he put it together for two programs, I mean, the world's waiting for him, you know? I mean, this is the Kolya Da dilemma. I mean, and it's in a different way, but I mean, all these medals are available. We want to give them to you. We want to see you win them. And I used to really think, I, I, put, I will eat my words on this because I blamed the Federation. Because I was like, you have to trust young talent. You have to give them the opportunity. And remember, we were hearing from people they have, and mm-hmm. they've made it. They've made their choice because it, it has already come back to bite them a couple times. I didn't necessarily believe it, and then sort of as I see it, I was like, even with the right opportunities, it does seem. And some people are tremendously like beautiful dancers, great performers, incredible projectors, but not competitors. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we have here is someone in the same way I kind of felt that about Jeremy. Nobody could move like Jeremy. I thought Jeremy's skating skills were even better than Patrick's at times. Like, but but yet the that artist nature of him was not coupled with a, a hungry competitive nature. And unfortunately, that's the name of this game. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't know where you go from here. Yeah, I don't, I it based on their reaction in the kiss and cry yeah i expect more of the same yeah yeah and that doesn't mean that someone should have to be chewed out in the kiss and cry but that no. does mean that there has to be a level of awareness of let's not do this again yeah let's let's not do this that got yeah. away from us. yeah well, it, it makes me wonder if they go that. Do you think they change anything or, or is it just like steady as it goes at home? Because again, we see these moments happen. And like you're saying, maybe this is the chance to switch something up at home and how we're going to prepare next time. But it seems like whatever happens behind the scenes must stay pretty consistent because then the inconsistency That's why I becomes. Think the federations, the I'm not kidding when I'm like, I would demand they send a free program in once a week. Because the one thing is, Marta Caroli, for as problematic as she was, set up a system where people were held accountable and they knew that there were certain performance standards that they had to meet on a regular basis in order to even be in the conversation to get the scores that they deserved to make teams, right? If you didn't hit a certain level at their check-ins, your scores were slashed. They didn't even look. Yeah. They would actually not watch you at some of the camps, which is not right. But there's a the level of being held accountable and knowing that there's a certain expectation and standard of when you represent your country that you're expected to perform in a certain way. And I think we see a lot of times where there are skaters that get into the, oh, it's early in the season. Oh, it's first one. And it's like, well, Roman, actually winning Nebelhorn would have been a huge moment in his career yes. to kind of reset the opportunity. Like, look at Deanna. She won Nebelhorn. Now it's like, oh, she's going to go to Skate America. She's going to go against Alexa. She'll probably medal there. 
it erases the fact that they've been like kind of struggling in a no man's land. Now she's this huge skating star, right? right. Luna has been, Luna Hendricks has been steadily seizing opportunities. Right. Cal Reese, she's not always the best, but she seizes the opportunity, right? And she's near the top. She didn't have the best outing last week, but it wasn't a complete disaster, right? So right. she steadily shows up and the federation does reward her for that in japan even when people think oh wakaba should get the nod she does get the benefit of the doubt more often right yeah it would help roman's case a million and one percent if he showed up more from time to time to time and we just yeah. see that it doesn't happen and well that's already in this the brief start to the season we've seen people capitalizing on momentum look at the look at Lila and Lewis, Lewis. Uh, they're they're already taking these moments to solidify stature mm -hmm. and again they're they're sort of in the same kind of they've owned ambiguous spot he was in yeah they owned like the pre grand prix from august and they right. have they have at least one or two more competitions before the Grand Prix. So they're they're gonna continue to build their name and their reputation. They're giving you permission to reward them on the Grand Prix. They're yeah. setting it up so no one has to think twice about it when it comes time to it. Yeah, and I agree. Confidence and their consistency. Remember last year when they did their twizzles, you'd be like, I don't know if Lila's gonna do it. This year, they've not had any misses. Right. And started so much earlier. L last season, their momentum was off and they were starting late and they seemed to be behind. Well, other people were doing the same sort of capitalizing early on. Um, and you're right. It, again, I just, is that, I don't know if it's from like the freelance nature of opera or something. I just can't imagine seeing such an opportunity like this season is, is and then watching everyone just let it go. I'm like, it's right there for anyone to grab. And I love seeing people like Deanna, seeing people like the British Ice Dancers, like people like Luna, all these sorts of people, like just grab those opportunities. No, Alexa did write into us after last week. We didn't know if she was training. I saw she started posting. <laughs> And she wrote in and she goes, I took 10 days off after champs camp. Calm down, we're training. I said, <laughs> this is why we love her, right? Yeah. Just wanted to know. Listen, Alexa. Like, we knew she had a plan. Yeah. Oh my God, her against Deanna at Skate America. I'm ready for that. Okay. Right. And it's going to be good looking that those programs and those lifts and these sorts of things. Like it's going to be fun to see. It's going to have the bigger twist. Let's find out. <laughs> can they do them side by side so we can actually measure? Amazing. <laughs> I think for both, it's going to come down to the side by sides. You know what I mean? They both have great lift positions. Mm -hmm. You know, Jenny yeah. did point out, she's like, you know, I don't think Diana Deanna likes to do a triple sal in the Neville Horn rink. She did a double. I think she even did a double in the exhibition at uh, Junior Worlds. Uh, <laughs> I think I recall that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's very funny. Oh, man. Well, she still won. Good she for her. Good Saw time. that opportunity and took it. Both yeah. costumes were great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The free especially. And she loved that moment when he's lifting her. Oh, and the throws were so good too. So, oh, and I love she'll have a reunion with her good friend Jim Peterson at Skate America. <laughs> Who was he there with? John, all you have to do is be able to do like a side by side double flip this year, and you will make Skate America as a U.S. Jim somehow got the team that got. Were you worried about which team was going to get the TBD for pairs for Skate America? Jim got it. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, don't, I can't even tell you the name of the girl. It's, I think it's the boy who dropped the girl on the twist at 2017 Nationals <gasps> in the short program. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Or Skate America spot. That is the <laughs> Skate is, Skate Yeah, America. the TV yeah. has been deed. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you see Rika Kihira this week. Ah, yes. So I did watch this, the Titanic, and I am referring to the music, by the way. I knew you were going to make that joke. Yeah. Right? Ba -da 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 -da. Um, one might say, in some ways, the program was more of the same. Um, I felt, you know, a lot of the Sao Cao moments were very nice. She's I don't... Herself, apparently? Yeah, I don't... Where do you see this going? 
I see some withdrawals in her future. It, I might as well. I don't know uh, what the status of things is for her off the ice right now, um, but this seemed like lovely, like she could now go do a Japan Open or something she like that. She had a lot of injuries that she's still been having. Yeah. I believe she's trying to make sectionals and it just... And again, with the depth of Japanese ladies already in this preseason, you know, We've seen Rinka and we've seen Kaori and I don't see how she and... would climb back to being in the top 10 in Japan by nationals, but she's very talented, but it looks like she's had some really serious injuries and there's some serious depth in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want her to take her time. Yeah. Again, the idea of rushing back, I, there's no fire here unless it's she so also pretty. thinks... If she thinks this is a big opportunity this season, that, you know, with the vacancies left by Russia, maybe that was her motivating factor to try to make it work. But I'm ready for that Japan Open, though. This is uh... yeah. What was your moment of the week? What was? Gosh, it was thrilling to see Deanna take that win. Yes, but I wonder if that was it. Well, Deanna was originally my first place of the week. But she got knocked out by Balieva putting the hood. Oh my God. Oh, oh. Deanna, you couldn't compete with that. All right. You just you couldn't. All right. Maybe next time you'll be first for me. But just non Russian like moment, Russian moment. So the yeah. non Russian moment for me, also yeah. Deanna. The Russian moment, I'm going to say my boy Aliyev because I did not expect him to be able to do any quads at this stage of the game, let alone the ones he did. And I like his free skate and he looks good, yeah. I also have to say Lila Fear, she was in the point where they're doing the Latin dance moves and the rhythm dance. She was really having a moment this week in that JLo inspired dress that she wears in the rhythm dance. The free, they looked to be a little, they held back. You know, Kristen made them change the exit to that rotational lift and, you know, they had some, they just looked more conservative. Also, when they do the three assisted jumps, I feel like those are easy points for them to get. And when they do the backflip, like the setup takes forever. It's not as smooth. Like, I feel like those need to be like, bam, bam, yeah. to get like maximum yeah. POE. And they just look, it looks like work. So I thought that there's a little cleanup action to have in that. And I'll say, how about this for a weird, or an unexpected one? Was Allison Reed upside down in that opening rotational moment? Of you the, are like the Reed's uh, biggest, you know, the mom has always said that Allison is the most talented, apparently. And I, you, I, you see it. You see the mind of a choreographer at work. Like you can tell she she really really cares about that stuff. She's not just doing it. So I, I, I enjoyed it very much. I liked when Kathy was doing the ISU stuff with uh, the Instagram channel and also a read talent. So yeah. 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 Shout out to Kathy. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey. <laughs> looks sexy everyone. Bye guys.